Good morning. So this morning my vlog is on race and evolution. So I did a lot of work um, just like traveling and observing different races as well as searching on the internet um, of humans and learning about evolution. Um, you know, like even Lamarck, Darwin, um, race realists, um, uh, Stephen, well, Kuhn, and a bunch of others, but anyway, and this is what I've concluded. So race is definitely real. I do know anthropologists, there are some anthropologists who speak against the reality of race, that it's just a social construct, but I don't agree. I really, I'm pretty much certain, you know, almost 100% certain that race is real. You know, I can't, I don't want to say 100%, but I would say like 99%, only because I, I haven't done any specific genetic tests to prove it. I haven't gone out to prove it genetically, which is really the way to get to more certainty in this day and age. But, you know, after looking and searching on the internet to kind of verify what I was thinking, or really just to see what else was out there for evidence, I started to realize there are really differences. There really are white people who are very white, um, including albinos, and there are black people who are clearly very black, black-skinned. Um, so very white-skinned people and very black-skinned people. And I was trying to understand how did this really happen? You know, I know it's not really a creationism thing and a, a Christian thing, and it's not dependent on God, but you know, it's definitely dependent on evolution. So I did a lot of work to try to piece it together. Like, how did humanity become different races, and how did humanity evolve? And, you know, I really subscribe to the, like, out of Africa hypothesis um, that humans evolved for the most part in sub saharan Africa. But... You know, how did we become different races? Why didn't we all just end up being the same skin color for the most part? And I realized um, <clears throat> that it made sense. You know, there's a lot of evidence and information out there that kind of corroborates this. It's not really told in the way that I'm going to tell the story, but all the time, but it makes sense. So. Um, the white race really left Sub-Saharan Africa much earlier than the black race. And quite honestly, the black race didn't, for the most part, didn't leave on their own accord. They were brought out of Africa as slaves. So the white race migrated north um, through the Arabian Peninsula. And the white race... Um, eventually settled in Northwest Europe and Great Britain and the British Isles, that area. That's the Caucasian, the white Caucasian race of humans, a subspecies really of humanity, just as the black race can be a subspecies. It doesn't mean that they're different species, it just means that they are like different clines. They're slightly different based on skin color, um, and this has to do with their evolution. And then I started wondering, well, how, you know, what were the other factors? So migration is probably the, is really the biggest factor and that they were there for um, subjected to different climates. Going north, there was colder, snows, um, different animals to eat, different insects to eat. Um, apparently when they're migrating north, humans at some point were eating a lot of insects to sustain themselves rather than like just hunting. Um, that's written about in the literature somewhere. And then, um, so the climate, um, and sun exposure, um, sun exposure being a big factor. Nina Jablonski writes a lot about that, although she's one that doesn't subscribe to different races in that fact and, you know, thinks of it more as a social construct based on her writing and her lectures. I've looked, look, watched a lot of her as well, but I'm, for me, I'm on the other side where it's, you know, it's race is real, it's more like Jared Taylor and Richard Lynn, those people, like, I, I agree with, with them regarding race. 
Um, but for me, you know, I also, you know, started wondering since it's, you know, we're not from, you know, created by some all powerful being, whereas we're a result of evolution and, you know, forces of the universe, really just um, evolution. You know, how our cells combined over time, became animals, land creatures, tetrapods, tetalik, for instance, and then eventually evolved into bipedal upright walking organisms with opposable thumbs. It turns out that, um, you know, we evolved from other apes or other hominids. Um, we are apes. All humans are classified as apes. It's not really a derogatory thing, although it can be used that way. It's really not a derogatory thing. It's just a fact. Um, so, I, um, so I was wondering, you know, well, how, how is this racial component evident in other apes? And I started looking for different colored monkeys different colored apes. And I've concluded that, you know, whites, Caucasians are more, and this is the big conclusion, um, <laughs> like a, that they are more closely related to certain types of apes and monkeys that are white-skinned monkeys, such as like the rhesus macaque. I don't know if every rhesus macaque has white skin, but I do know a good, a lot there's a lot of pictures of Reese's macaques, at least on the internet, that have white skin. And those pictures are real. They're not fake pictures. They're definitely real pictures. So that's not the question. It's just I haven't had the means to do a full population study of all Reese's macaque. How many are white skinned? How many are black skinned or darker skinned or brown skinned? And what are the other white skinned monkeys or apes? But anyway, the point is, you know, whites, Caucasians are more closely related to Reese's macaque. This is kind of my conclusion and kind of my hypothesis now, whereas black-skinned humans are more closely related to gorillas, um, and that's the biggest divide. So I'll put some pictures up to show you so you can see for yourself. It won't be a lot of pictures. It'll just be, you know, one or maybe five pictures that have kind of depict what I'm showing. The other area to look at is the difference in the noses. That is very apparent. Caucasians have slender, straighter noses with pointier tips. There are, you know, there's a vi var variation on their noses. There's genetic and phenotypic variation. So they're not all straight and pointy. But for the most part, that they have that characteristic. And, you know, that variation is really not because they're necessarily the ones with slightly broader looking noses are blacker. It's, ne it's really just more because of again, evolution, divergent, convergent, and homologous evolution. These things that occurred over time that, you know, led people to getting straighter noses, and then some of them, for some reason, got broader noses, whatever they were doing. And I don't know all those factors. I haven't thought about it, and I haven't really looked for those specific details. But I do know that that's more likely and really, I'm almost pretty much 100% sure that's the reason. Um, but whereas blacks have broader noses, no doubt about that. There are blacks, black-skinned people who do have straightish noses and more European-looking noses too, but again, that has to do with convergent, divergent, and homologous evolution as opposed to just being the same as white people or, you know, whites being the same as blacks. So anyway, the big take-home point and my big conclusion on race and evolution is that the white Caucasian race um, is a subspecies of humans, the black African race, really, African is not really, a, I would say, necessarily a black term. And I know, I'm pretty sure it came from Europeans, like Portuguese and Spanish and English. So I'm not really sure, you know, but the black tribes, really, um, are from, are, more clo are also a subspecies of humans. So they're both species of humans, and both can interbreed, which makes them the same species. But they're clines, really. Clines is the word that they like to use in the literature. Um, and um, they are related, more closely related to different sets of monkeys and apes. I don't know if anybody's looked at the specific genetics of that properly to do a proper analysis to really figure out our origins and differences in tribal origins and admixture, racial and species admixture, different 
admixtures with different hominids and hominins over time. But I do know there's differences. For instance, one other example is the white Caucasian race is also more closely related to Neanderthal than the black um, African race. And <coughs> the, the Asian race is more closely related to Denisovan than the white Caucasian race or the black African race. And the black African race is probably more related to things like Africanus and Australopithecus and other, um, you know, hominids like that. I don't know all the names for the ones that were definitely remained in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but we do have common ancestry. There's no doubt about that. But there's also differential ancestry or differences and um, you know that some of it has to do with admixture so breeding between slightly different hominids or hominids that were similar but became different because of climate different migrate migratory patterns over time so you know really the populations the differences in those populations but um, anyway so that's really it um, the, you know there are clines of human species that are different subspecies and that includes the white Caucasian race, Asian race, and the black African race. So those are the three dominant races of humans. And that has to do with differences in migration, differences in climate, sun exposure, and differences in... Um, hmm. And um, differences in... Um, Uh, and ancestral differences between the apes dip with uh, other apes that have existed some that have you know gone extinct but still s survive as genetic components of other animals via admixture um, such as Neanderthal um, Denisovan and Australopithecus and others you know that still exist such as white rhesus the white the, rather the rhesus macaque, um, chimpanzee, and gorilla. All right, well, um, I kind of just wanted to put my stance on the record that race is real. There are evolutionary reasons for that and evolutionary differences. And I'm 100% sure that when the genetics are adequately and properly studied from a less biased position, that'll bear out in the genetics of race. Um, which, you know, is largely uh, observed via the skin color of humans and other animals, but also in things like hair texture, uh, bone structure, um, fat deposition, and, you know, other characteristics, and musculature. Those are some of the main characteristics. I know this might sound really antiquated but I think a lot of the scientific community has got that wrong and I know there are um, consequences in how we use utilize race um, and integrate it in science all forms of science from medicine surgery healthcare to um, even understanding cognitive differences you know that which I also think is quite real, too. Um, on the last note, not that cognitive differences are that great. I wasn't necessarily impressed by the difference as much as the fact that, you know, it, it is actually real and reproducible and um, has its own reasons, too. So that's another aspect, too. But anyway, it took a lot of time. It took me about three to seven years of really going through the literature and reading, reading different points, typing things up, um, blogging and um, interacting with other people who who are interested in hearing their and listening and reading their their arguments and that's you know my conclusion. So I would love to definitely read more opinions on that. you know if you still think if you think I'm wrong, correct me and let me read why you think. You know, the only thing is that at this point, I haven't really got any convincing arguments. And 
when I read the stuff on the genetics of race, you know, there's enough evidence for me when you read it carefully and really understand what these scientists are saying in a very politically correct manner um, <clears throat> or scientifically correct manner. They're not the um, the ones that really understand it really aren't including it. They're really just they're not necessarily being, saying it as directly as I have, but they are uh, definitely not excluding it. So this is my blog, and it's what August something August 2019. So I will upload this as soon as I get through my backlog of of vlogs. So that's my take on race and evolution after about. Uh, about 12 years or so, about, actually more than 12 years, 2005, about 15, 14 to 15 years of reading on race.